All right, you guys are taking the podium in Philadelphia Union head coach Jim Curtin. Jim will give an opening statement, then we'll open the floor to questions. Jim, whenever you're ready. First off, uh, you know, a thank you to here. Obviously, a long layoff since we've been here over a month, uh, and, and you know, for them to be behind us, you know, it's been a difficult uh, time. Uh, it says a lot about them. I uh, thought the place was loud. You know, they got into the game early. Uh, thought that you know, Chris gave them a reason to get into the game early. We talked about that uh, in the pregame. Uh, you know, overall, a night where you know, I, I thought we started well uh, in terms of our passing. You know, as the half went along, Chicago had a lot of possession, not a lot of penetration through our group. I thought we were fairly organized on the night. Uh, Com slipped through maybe once or twice, uh, dangerous moments, but you know, overall, uh, played the percentages, limited their key guys as best as we could. Uh, and overall, you know, guys made some plays, and, and the players deserve a lot of credit. You know, they've been through uh, some highs and lows this year, but I thought they stuck together out there on our home field. Uh, and did enough and deserved three points tonight against a very good uh, Chicago team. Thought that we, uh, you know, were, were pretty clinical in the second half in terms of killing the game off, and then also being really aggressive on the counter. Uh, so again, credit to the players; uh, they did a really, really good job and put a lot into the game. We'll start Jonathan from Brooklyn. Change up the tactics. Here. What went into that? Yeah, you know. I, as, you know, people get caught up in the, you know, the, the graphics and how they get put out. And as soon as I saw the, the graphic get put out, I, I figured you would probably come with that as the first question. Uh, to be honest, it, it's still a 4-2-3-1, uh, you know, just because it's written that way on a, a schematic that comes out. It's the difference between a yard or two in either direction. Uh, if you look, go back and watch the tape, uh, as we will as well, uh, by design, we still always had someone next to, to Warren, you know, so it is still the, the 4 2 three, one The best thing about the formation is uh, there can be fluidity in it. Uh, Warren is a guy who is a ball winner. Uh, we thought matchup-wise, he's obviously been in good form. Uh, and, and what Chicago likes to do, we thought that it was important to, you know, invert the, the triangle a little bit in some moments uh, to get pressure to Dax McCarty, who for me is the, the engine of that team. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, on paper it looks a little different. The running of, you know, five, six yards, a little more forward from Ali defensively and from Harris uh, is a little bit of a change, but uh, still the same formation, same ideas, same principles that the guys, uh, as you saw when they execute them, uh, are pretty dangerous and tough to play against. Go ahead, uh, Joe, you're on the floor. Jim, how happy are you for Chris to finally break the job? I know it's been kind of a frustrating season for him. In front of yeah, him. yeah, happy for Chris. You know, uh, it's never through lack of effort. Uh, we asked him today, again, you know, tactically speaking, on, on a calm side, their most dangerous player, uh, to do a lot of, of dirty work doubling down on him. Uh, a lot of their uh, goals this season have come through him and, and Nikolic and, and trying to limit their chances uh, uh, and help Keegan. Uh, we, we asked Keegan a, a lot of times in the middle third of the field to force uh, a calm inside and, and on the dribble where you know he has to combine and, and play a pass and try and get it back where there's maybe more mis more possibility of a mistake rather than uh, just letting him get ahead of steam and running at Keegan, which is uh, no defender in our league can, can run with him. So uh, I thought Chris did a good job in that regard. Uh, happy for him in terms of now uh, confidence moving forward. And, and like many uh, instances, when, when these guys get one, they usually get another. And then he could have had a third, to be honest. I think I didn't I think he didn't see the goalkeeper came out and completely uh, misplayed that one. And he just had an open goal there. So happy for Chris uh, again. He's done a decent job for us on the assist side, and, and happy for him to get two goals tonight. Go ahead, with Matt. You're on the floor. 14 goals is a big number for this franchise. But what does it mean to have CJ be there, and even with set his record? Then? Yeah, CJ again has been a guy that's in and around the goal, uh, and, and if we get him service, he, he executes. Uh, he does it. Like we, we've talked ad nauseum about how much defensive work he does, and the fighting uh, for every inch out there for his teammates, and how unselfish he is. <laughs> Even going back to the Minnesota game where he pulls out because he wants to get Chris to, Chris going a bit. Uh, so he's a true team player, uh, a true team striker, uh, and the goals are a product of, of the guys getting him service. When he gets crosses like that and he's running across the face of goal, uh, even in the first play early on when he gets across the face uh, and their defender makes a last ditch uh, effort at it and it tips it over, it's still uh, his movement on the night I thought was, was good. Uh, and again, yeah, happy for him uh, and the, those individual accomplishments. You know, as as the team has success and we get wins, uh, individual accomplishments are, are, are nice. But at the end of the day, these guys all won three points. We'll do a couple more, Jonathan, here in the front row. You, you mentioned that there was the plan was always to have a guy next to him. When the third guy is him instead of rolling, we'll see you. 
did that give Ali and Harris a little more latitude to, to get forward? Because I know Ali said something he wants to do. Warren's, Warren's uh, work rate is unique uh, than anybody. So again, it's not really a matter of uh, what El Sino brings or what Roland brings. Those guys are obviously clearly more attack-minded guys. Uh, but Warren's individual skill set allows uh, freedom for others, you know. So again, his ability to, to close ground, to break up plays, to pull the one he pulled off the line in the, the closing seconds, uh, just athletically and, and his engine uh, is going to allow Ali to get a little more forward, uh, gives Harris a little more uh, confidence to take a little bit of risk. Uh, it wasn't our best day with the ball still. They had the ball a ton, but uh, in terms of the three of them working together and being tough to play through in the middle, uh, did a very good job. But Craval certainly frees up space uh, for anybody just with the amount of uh, ground he covers. And I'm sure the, the data that we get back on that when we look at it will uh, prove that right. Go ahead, David, second round middle. How, how can you guys build off this performance as there's only like four games left in the season? Wins are important. You know, winning uh, brings confidence. Your reward is you get Atlanta in their building, which is uh, can, can make that confidence uh, become more nerves. They're a great team. They're in great form right now. but. We have to go in there and where our, our road mentality has improved, but we haven't been able to take that next step, which is taking wins on the road. I think this is our eighth win at home, which, you know, we, with two more home games, uh, a chance to have a pretty respectable home record, uh, but where we've fallen short this year is, is on the road. I think that's clear to everybody. Uh, turning those ties into wins is critical. Turning losses into ties when you're on the road is important, and we didn't do that enough this year, and that's why we are where we are. Uh, I think we're pretty honest and, and open with you guys about us not being happy uh, with that. But there's a chance now to go to Atlanta on turf in a hostile environment uh, with 50, 60,000 people screaming against you and, and try to make them go quiet. That's what pro, pro athletes uh, crave. Uh, it, it sounds crazy to you guys maybe, but your, your goal when you go on the tough atmospheres, uh, and he will tell you, I'll tell you, when you make those people go silent, that's the it's the best, it's the ultimate. So that's our task. It's a darn hard one because they are firing on all cylinders. Uh, but I guess that's our reward for our three points tonight. We get to go to Atlanta midweek. We'll wrap it up with here, Joe on the floor. Jim, I know you were full place with Richie midweek. How can you assess how he played again tonight? Yeah, so I actually thought in the first half um, showed composure to with the ball to get out of some tight spots and, and let us breathe a little bit. Um, Second half, he had a couple mistakes on the ball, which which happens. Uh, there's there's certain moments in the with, with the scoreline, with the time uh, in the game, uh, on when to take risk and when to try to get out of spots. And he had a, a couple misclearances, I would call them, that we got punished for on the goal. So uh, center backs uh, can be a, a great job when nobody notices you and no one talks about you. But uh, when goals go in, there's always something the center back could have done better. On that one, I think Richie would put his hand up and say he could have got more contact on the ball. He's Keegan in a weird spot where he gets punished. So uh, overall, it's a win, uh, and I'm happy with Richie in terms of competitive, competitive fighting, winning his individual duels. Uh, good performance, but there's still always room for improvement uh, when you're defending. Excellent. Thank